uh, we'll jump right in and, you know, thank you for being here live and uh, we'll have some time for some questions, but uh, in the interest of getting started, we'll start. I'm going to go ahead and pause for one second, show the bear, which is the prompt. So they know where to edit. Welcome to the UCLA Anderson Drive Time Podcast. My name is Dylan Stafford. It is a Friday before a three-day weekend. This is episode number 90. Uh, we have lots of people still joining. Thank you all for sharing this 45 minutes to an hour. My guest today is just a wonderful human being, um, in my opinion, but I think everybody's a wonderful human being. I get so excited when I get to do this job. This is the best part of my job. So Yang Kim, class of 2023, is our guest today, as you saw in the advertisements. Um, Yang is a newly promoted, well, actually moved to a new company. He's a new vice president of worldwide television publicity at Warner Brothers, a a uh, new company in a new position that he stepped into during his UCLA Anderson time. He's in his second year here. He's a double Bruin and, you know, special place in our heart for people who went to UCLA in undergrad where he studied sociology before launching a decade long career in entertainment that he's had prior to coming back to Anderson. And the two things that kind of stand out about Young that make him really, I think, a, a true Bruin and, and pretty epic that we get to introduce you is that he was on the UCLA Spirit Squad during undergrad and was one of the Joe Bruins and served in that role as the, the mascot of UCLA for two seasons. And as if that were not epic enough, Yong, <laughs> this is so cool, Yong. You can't write this stuff. Oh my um, gosh. Yong shares a birthday with Coach John Wooden. So oh with, yeah. with that very, very long introduction, Yang, thank you for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. I mean, it's it's an honor to be here. And, and thank you, Dylan, for doing all of this. I know it you know takes a lot of time and I know a lot of pre people appreciate it, but um, thanks. Oh, <laughs> well, my thank pleasure. Else being here. I don't know. I mean, I feel like all these people had probably like really fun things to do this three-day weekend, but um but I appreciate you all <laughs> showing up to listen to what I have to say, which I hope it's, it's interesting enough. So, Oh, well, we're, we are thrilled to have all our guests and we're thrilled to get to kind of give a behind the scenes of before, during, and what's next for your UCLA double journey. And, uh, oh my gosh, great. People keep joining. Um, we'll, we'll try to do about half an hour, you know, 10 minutes on before, during, and what's next. So at the bottom of the hour, 1240 or so, you know, I'd love for you all to help guide the second half with questions. And I know many of you are friends of Young, and we're thrilled that you're here. And some of you are newly admitted and we're thrilled you're here. Some of you are alumni friends. So everybody, thanks for making this kind of a, a share success community conversation. So Young, okay, give us a little bit about your backstory. Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to high school? Yeah, so I uh, I grew up in San Diego, so basically been in the SoCal bubble uh, my my entire life, I suppose, and uh, and I and I still joke around with with people that I have a horrible sense of geography. I feel like anything you know, like north of like Santa Barbara is like NorCal, and you know I don't know anything like east of like Vegas. It's just you know the rest of the country. I mean, again, not to be flippant about it, but um, just to, just to just to demonstrate how how small the SoCal bubble was for me. And I, I grew up in San Diego, um, decided to go to UCLA for my undergrad. Uh, my, my parents also decided to move to LA after I graduated from high school. I um, went, went to Rancho Buena Vista. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, they wanted to expand their business in, in Los Angeles. So I sort of ended up following them. I really didn't know that I was going to go to UCLA. Um, and it's it's sort of, you know, that that idea that everything falls in place the way it needs to be and uh the rest is history i guess um i didn't realize i was going to pursue a career in entertainment either i didn't really know that was even an option for me to be honest with you i didn't have any connections um to to showbiz whatsoever i mean i, I come from an immigrant family you know my 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 parents immigrated in like in the 80s and and i was born in korea and moved over when when i was four so pretty much you know my access to the entertainment industry was very like nothing <laughs> so um, <laughs> it was very nothing anything. yeah so it's very nothing so um I do remember you know I was driving by um Pico Boulevard one day you know when I was an undergrad I think it was my junior or senior year and I saw all these billboards um on the Fox lot and I don't know if you've ever seen it um in, in Century City and I remember just driving by and thinking wow like you know someone's got to be doing 
something, you know, behind these, you know, gates. And, uh, and I thought, you know, maybe, maybe it might be interesting to learn more about, you know, television marketing. And I feel like of all the different entertainment, uh, sort of like, um, platforms, you know, television always meant the most to me just because, you know, I think one personally, as, as much as I appreciate movies, I'm not, uh, I don't feel like I have the attention span to watch something for two, three hours or even less than that. Um, I feel like episodic is, is more my jam. And also I grew up watching TV, you know, it was sort of like a, uh, another member um, of my family, you know, um, growing up again, like from like an immigrant family, you know, just watching TV shows with my grandma, you know, uh, it just it just it just feels more homey i guess so um Aww. that's that's where i fell into it and uh we do we I, bond with we bond with our families right it's it's yeah. like a campfire it's just a digital version exactly so so that's why i fell in love with television and um and you know through through actually through um ucla you know they have um through the alumni association i was able to build a relationship with this one person who helped me uh, sort of get my foot on the door. Um, and, uh, and I guess that's where I am. I, I feel like I've, I've had a pretty traditional trajectory in terms of my entertainment career. I started off as a page at Paramount and, you know, I have many good friends that I, I've met there. And then from there, I went to executive assistant at, at 20th um, Century Fox Television at the time. And then, and then, um, and was in marketing and brand management there. And that was a really good role because it helped me really understand, you know, these television shows as as brands, not necessarily like TV shows. So we'd work mm. with a lot of different ancillary departments at the company, and it would be, you know, working with consumer products and with distribution and every basically every department there was. Um, and then from that, I, I wanted to really transition my role more into PR uh, because I just wanted more tangible results for myself. That was sort of how I wanted uh, to measure success in, in my book. Mm. Um, so like with marketing, it was a lot of like more nebulous, like numbers and impressions and that kind of stuff. But I wanted to like actually be on the, you know, ground floor, you know, at, at events or, or um, seeing like, you know, our talent, like on late night talk shows or on cover of magazines, you know, I like that was more fulfilling for me. That's what I needed. So um, I was able to transition over to PR at NBC Universal and sort of worked my way there. And then I was recruited back um, to Fox uh, to do more PR there. And then that ultimately uh, merged with, with the Walt Disney Company. And then I became a Disney employee for a few years after that. And then based on uh, my current boss, um, who I used to work with at NBC Universal, um, was leading the team at Warner Brothers Television Group and uh, asked me if I wanted to join her. So I said, yes. So um, I've been there since November and, uh, and it's, been, it's been a good run so far. So um, yeah, that's, that's sort of you know, where I am. And it just really shows you like the power of you know, an organization you know, that can really help you move forward with the next step. And, uh, and I think one of the benefits of being in LA and specifically Anderson is that you do get you know, access to being in the entertainment capital of the world. And, and, uh, and to be honest with you, like, you know, I, I, I've talked to you about this. I've talked to a lot of people about this is based on where I am, I don't necessarily need like an MBA for my career in, in, in the sense of like, you know, getting that jump start. But I, I have found value in my own ways of, of, you know, with these, elect, elect, with the electives that I'm taking, you know, of like how to be a better manager or, you know, how to motivate people or how to be a better speaker or how to present better, have more executive presence. So I've been able to really find my own lane within the MBA program um, while doing so, having my job, <laughs> you know, <laughs> without having to, you know, move to another city or anything like that. So it's been super beneficial in that sense. Well, so we've we've introduced the arc of the story of our hero, but let's go back and, and tell a couple of vignettes. So okay. just to just to give a couple, because that's also a thrilling part of your story. In addition to kind of the page to vice president, right? Like that's that's pretty epic. You know, what are you going to do with the next decade of your year? Oh well, maybe I'll do what Yong did. Yeah. Um, but so, how'd you choose UCLA for undergrad? Well, you know, I mean, it was 
I, I, I knew I had to keep my job. And, no, 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 no. I want to go back because I want to oh, get the mascot. I got my I undergrad. Sorry, my yeah. undergrad from you know, San Diego I, to you. Because remember, you were leaving. You were going to Canada basically because you didn't realize that there was anything north of. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, I you know what's funny is that I didn't really have a lot of knowledge of UCLA to be honest with you um, mm. during my undergrad. You know, um, and I don't know why that is. I, I I always felt like LA to me was just sort of like really far <laughs> again like my bad geography you know I've, I've I've always thought about myself um going to the east coast for for um undergrad okay. and okay. uh and I don't know why I think it was just just being in southern California I thought I wanted something completely different like you know I wanted maybe like the four seasons or I wanted to feel like that sort of um you know, like, you know, it's, it's like the romantic feeling of like, oh, I've got to pack and head over to the East Coast and then come back for Thanksgiving with my family. And, you know, I'm someone like, who, you know, so, um, so I didn't really, it wasn't on my radar at all. And then, um, and then somehow I just managed to choose UC. <laughs> it's weird. I mean, you know, I mean, it's like that UC system, you know, I think there's some, there's some, um, I don't I forget there's if you're a part of like certain percentage of you know the class and you get admitted to UCs automatically or something and it just happened to be that way and then and then also I I don't think I fully um understood the financial ramifications of being an out-of-state student either until I like actually compared like what it is you know at being a UC student versus like going to Boston for school or something like that so, um, so your parents were probably like <laughs> yes and and then you know I uh and then, you know, just, I just felt like, okay, well, and, and you know what else really um, attracted me, and this is so funny, is, is that, you know, I had, I had a couple of friends in my high school who, you know, were a few years older than me, and they were already UCLA students, and, and they were like, you want to go where there's um, sports, <laughs> you know, because that, that's definitely a big part of, uh, a big part of your college experiences like tailgates for football or like going to like basketball games and and given like you know um UCLA's like incredible you know history with within NCAA you know I, I didn't really realize like that would play a huge role and it clearly did because I was like the bear and everything or the Bruin and uh and you know that was something that definitely swayed my decision I I you know looking back it's funny how it's like that one little think of like having a college football team would make the decision of of which school you go to so um so that's where I went and you know I, I will, how about you know, how about sociology how did how did you get into that you know because <laughs> your parents your parents are business people right they have their own business that's right so so I, I feel like I was influenced by my parents and like I said you know uh as as um a lot of immigrant families are they they do their own small businesses you know and my dad you know you know I worked with him um growing up you know I mean he would have you know I remember like waking up like early in the morning going out to like swap meets with him you know he'd be selling like t-shirts you know at the time like three for ten dollars four for ten dollars whatever you know I would I would drive and you know what now I, it's funny I'm talking about this and it's like I would have to drive to LA with him because he would be getting like you know supplies and, and and stuff like that from LA and I remember just like hating his drives um maybe that's why I didn't want to really want to go to LA but it's funny but you know again like you know just sort of like racks to riches stories, you know, like, you know, my dad starting off at swap meets and eventually like he um, sort of graduated into like general merchandise. So like 99 cent stores. And from there, you know, then really finding his own groove in like the textiles business. And then ultimately, you know, having his own business in the fashion district in downtown LA, you know, I, I've, I've seen that. And, and growing up, I, I feel like I was able to see all those business transactions and, and how to like really like negotiate with customers and get them to buy something else, you know, or, or, you know, like why you want this price here and one and, and just like marking up, you know, certain like items for what they are and knowing like what the wholesale price is and then how much margin we get, you know? So, so I've always sort of like had that business mentality and, and after graduating from college, I, I thought like I would go to business school, you know, and, and it's sort of like that catch 22 with MBA programs where it's like, well, you can't be an MBA until you have <laughs> like five years of experience. So, you know, I, I, knowing that I, I knew I had to work a little bit and then, um, and then I just sort of forgot about it. And, and, you know, it's funny because I've been talking about my dad a lot, but like, you know, he passed away in 2019. 
Um, and he had this like rare form of cancer. And after that happened, you know, obviously there, it was a shock to like my system and just sort of like the status quo of my family. So I remember like having to like step up to the plate. I mean, I don't have any siblings and, you know, my, my grandparents were still alive. So a lot of, there was a lot of like tectonic shifts, you know, with, with mm. the way that I was having to live my life. And, um, and that shifted also of me having to take care of my grandmother more, you know, some of the responsibilities my dad would do, I would have to do too. And my, um, and eventually, you know, my grandma moved in with my mom and, and, and I would, you know, go visit and I still do as much as I can um, on, on Sundays. And I remember like, just thinking, you know, during the height of COVID too, you know, like in, in 2020, like everyone kept on talking about like stocks and like, oh my God, you want to get stocks, this and that. And I feel like, I mean, the people who know me, like, you know, even on this call, like have know that I have like zero any sort of like finance finance like acumen whatsoever I'm like I I get stocks but like what are stocks you know so I really thought like I should probably educate myself on more of like personal finances and you know I thought about like do I take a use of extension class about this and then that led me to like do I do an online MBA and then sort of like I kept on thinking MBA 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 and um I was telling my friend the story the other day and you know, there was a day when I was just sitting there watching TV with my grandma as she does with her Korean shows. And we were watching like the Korean, you know, like form of the Today Show. And there was some sort of like life coach who came on and she was talking about like how, you know, usually like when you have these thoughts about you wanting to do something. So say you want to learn about how to like, you know, sew or you want to like learn an instrument. There is a reason why, you know, that you have these instincts. And, and it's, to prepare you for the next step, whether you know it or not. And in that moment, I know it sounds cheesy, but I was like, I've been thinking about wanting an MBA, but me wanting to get this at this moment of time maybe means that it's preparing me for something else. So I just, you know, um, with the bullet and then I just went for it and I uh, I, I applied kind of late, um, but luckily, you know, um, you guys were all nice enough to let me in. So- Hey, we're uh, glad you're here. You know, yeah. it was, we're all working from our couches and laptops. Yeah. It was- Oh my God, 2020, you're, I mean, what yeah. a, what a crazy chapter for everyone. But you know, um, it's so interesting because I, I think when it comes to relationship building, having, yeah. having like that common ground is so important. And I think we already have built in common ground, right? With, with my, with my fellow students. I mean, again, like I'm not like a super like philosophical person or whatever, but I do believe in this concept of like the invisible red thread, which basically means that we're all sort of connected, you know, in, in ways that we don't really know why or how. And the fact that, you know, me and like 300 or I don't, I forget how big our class is, but it's big, like 300 or 350 people decided to get their MBA, like 2019 to 2020, you know, in this particular moment of time, like something motivated all of them. Like there was something, you know, inside of them that wanted to take this journey. And the fact that we all decided to do it together at this moment, at Anderson in Los Angeles, you know, means something and, and we're sort of connected in ways that we don't really know why. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's our, it's our process of unraveling, you know, that thread of like, why did I decide to, what, like, why are we getting, why are we being brought together? I mean, you know, not to be like, so like the universe works in mysterious ways, but it does. <laughs> um, and, you know, like, same thing, like, you know, like, like how did this happen? But there's a reason it's preparing us for the next step, the next chapter in our lives. And, uh, and it's been really fulfilling to, to really, to, to, to try to understand why that is the way it is. Well, and as, as we were preparing, you, you mentioned a couple of times, I see in my notes, you know, the trauma bonding, right? Oh, like, yes. <laughs> you know, like just here we are, we're the class that started graduate school during a pandemic, you know, like, like, I've, I've marveled about your class a lot. Like, what would it have been like, were I in your shoes? You know, like, like you were trusting, Hey, this is going to work out. UCLA is a good place to be, you know, and it was in a very traumatic time. So, yeah. you know, like walk us, walk us through a, some of the things that you reflect on, you know, um, cause you, you were in, in our conversation, you were talking about you know, you don't like the word networking, but that the, the bonding yes. that is, that is part and parcel of doing something challenging. And, and in your case, it's like your career was going pretty well. Maybe you could have just kept doing what you were doing. So you didn't even quote unquote have to get an MBA. And yet you were going to choose to do this. 
So, you know, tell us about some of, you know, your learning groups or, or some of the experiences that you've gone through. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, um, I know trauma bond, bonding sounds so dramatic, but I think <laughs> Like You're on TV. My, it's a good, it's a good, yes. Yeah, but good. you know what? I, I I do definitely think it's it's real. I mean, you know, and I and I think, you know, you learn more, you know, when you're challenged in, in a given certain situation versus like when things are easy, you know. Mm-hmm. And um and two things, like I mean, you know, the the first thing is when you, when you go through like sort of like the the rough the rough waters together like it's just more memorable and it really is character building and it really does show you who what kind of person you are so I, I know like on this call like you know Chris and Vishnu they were my um OG learning groups you know from my LF and uh my my fall quarter and you know um and I just remember like you know being so uncertain about everything just like you know, it's like, I don't know these people, like, well, I like them, well, they like me, you know, like, is, is everyone going to pull their weight? Am I going to pull my weight? You know, there, there were all these, like, uncertainties, and, you know, just, um, we got along so well, and, you know, like, forever, like, I'll, I'll always have, like, a special place in my heart for them, you know, and, and that's because we went through, like, the whole trauma of, like, you know, like, getting into business school, starting off being on Zoom, I mean, like, literally, I, I, um, it was getting to a point where I was starting to like memorize everyone's backgrounds and it's like, oh, they're not like in their house today or like, where are they? You know, like, you know, <laughs> Do they it, take a book off the shelf. What? Exactly. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, it's like, I, I literally can like, I remember meeting everyone for the first time when we sort of had this um, mini version of like uh, people being able to go on campus, you know, every other week or, or a few times a quarter, um, we called them the roomies and then there were the zoomies. Um, I remember being like, oh my God, like I recognize your face, but it's weird that I don't see like the Aladdin lamp behind you or like, I don't, it's weird. It's like, I could like literally, you know, be like, oh, like where is your, you know, um, you're the fan that's going, you know, the, the ceiling fan, you know? So there's definitely that. And I think we had to really rely on each other a lot more. And, and, and also just like, even when I transitioned from, you know, the elephant fall to like the winter and spring I mean I've really found winter super challenging for my core classes because it's it's econ and it's accounting and it's like something I've never had to do before but you know those late nights with like you know my um (laughs) Rob um you know with with uh you know my my group like we were I think spending like we had these problem sets and they were like very challenging because if things are easy you won't learn which I found out like the hard way as much as I don't want to admit it you know it's like it's like yes like having to do these problem sets until like midnight finding where like the demand and supply curve you know for for certain things you know with my learning group really like was in a way like the worst of times but also the best of times you know and uh and I feel like going through that together we feel like again like so bonded for the rest of my life and 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 you talked about like the term networking. I sort of like really hate that word. And I know that's sort of like supposed to be in our, you know, um, makeup of, of business school students and, and professionals. But I just feel like the term networking is so transactional. Like, I mean, you know, it's just like to me, networking is like I go to a mixer. Hello, nice to meet you. What do you do? Oh, this is what I do. All right, let's trade business cards. Maybe I'll add you on LinkedIn. Um, and I remember saying Rolodex when I was talking to you before, but you know, I, I guess I um, sort of came with the times a little bit more. But like, like that just feels so like, ugh, you know, it doesn't feel genuine, you know. But I feel like the the like bonding like for me is like more important because it's not necessarily about like how many people you meet, but it's it's you know the quality of people. And I really feel like I was able to find that within you know the the Anderson group and. Um, and something I learned, you know, that, that I am able to apply now. So I remember last quarter, I took this class with Professor John Ullman, and it was interpersonal management communications. And one of the topics he talked about was creating your board of directors. So, you know, uh, I feel like I am in a good place where I have, you know, like my, I don't even want to say board of directors. They're more like board of advisors to me, you know, like they're people that, you know, that I would go to if I had something. And it's not, and, and, you know, you can say that's networking, but that's really not because we have 
already like a built-in relationship where it's like I feel close enough where I can go to you and ask a question be vulnerable and and vice versa like you can come to me and ask me a question about like just general like help with about your industry picking your brain about something you know like like that is is much more to me um valuable than the whole like I'll meet you for five minutes I'll never see you again maybe for the rest of my life um and 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 if you want to call that networking great you know like Networking has been great, but to me, like, I feel like there's another deeper layer than that, you know, which is really this, this b- being connected and relating, you know, I think relating was one of the tenets we talked about in LF, right, with Taryn Swan, you know, like relating is so important to me and connecting. Um, so, you know, I have found so much value in that. And, you know, like, there's so many people here that I would go to you know, with all my questions, like, I mean, literally, I, every, every time I feel like I have a tickle in my throat, I literally like text my room because he like is literally this operations mastermind for all like the COVID clinics in San Diego. And I'm like, what do you know? Like, do I have COVID, <laughs> you know? And, and just like, it's just, it's just great things. And um, it, it's been, it's been super, uh, I don't know, it's very rewarding. And um, I don't know, it's like going to my last year, I'm trying to make the most of it, um, you know, so we'll see. So yes, networking, yes. But like, I, I just hope it's like deeper than, than something that's just very like ephemeral. Well, we're, we're about halfway through. I have some more questions. I talk all day. I love hearing your story, but uh-huh. we do have, we have some new admits. We have some of your fellow classmates. So I'd love either uh, some questions for young or, Oh God. <laughs> Or uh, <laughs> suggestions of stories he should underline, since we we have some we have some great participants. So I do want to open it up. So anybody have anything they'd like to? Well, you know, while, while I guess while people are thinking about what they want to ask, and they, I'm totally fine if they don't. But you know, I, there there are definitely a lot of people here that um, that I've I've found so much uh, uh, support with, you know, and it, and it's funny because it's like from people that I didn't really expect it. And I I don't, and I don't mean to say that in like a bad way, but it's like, you know, there are literally like, you know, hundreds of people in this program, you know, and not only just in your class, but like literally like probably like 900 people while you're a student. And it's impossible for you to like know everybody or get to know everyone closely, you know, but you know, you, I do feel like at this point, you know, at this juncture, two years in and going to my final year that I've been able to build like an army, you know, of, of people that are there for me. And, um, and, it, and, you know, strength, strength comes from places where you didn't really expect it to be. So, you know, like I remember just, I've gone on like a lot of trips with, with people um, and almost like sort of like in the COVID bubble and just even like, you know, when, when someone like Janet Huang, you know, invites you to like a trip, you better go, you know, like, and, and, and the results from that is like, you know, um, sort of like this, this fun um, bonded, you know, group of people where I feel a lot like stronger and, and it's, and it's just nicer to, to be like, you know, um, to, to, to feel like you can just sort of like, you know, let loose and just be with your friends and, and, outside of the whole like business school thing and outside of the work stuff and outside of like studying and like your obligation it's like you can just like be normal with people and um so you know some of these like trips that we've taken upon ourselves you know I think uh has been super helpful so like Aspen you know I've gone to some people in like Hawaii you know these are all like not like Anderson um sponsored events but you know like I said you you feel so comfortable with these people that you would like travel with them you know it's like and trust me it's like you don't just travel with people that you've met at a networking event for five minutes you know what I mean it's like there's been um some sort of like uh you know um a lot a lot of like you know events or incidents that have happened in between for you to feel comfortable enough to do that and and you're so willing willing to want to be friends with them after you've traveled so you know I I think that says something (laughs) well and and, uh Debbie Marin asks, uh, great talk, Young. What do you find has been a hidden skill of yours that you've discovered while at Anderson or a lesson gleaned at school or class that's proved valuable at work? Yeah, I mean, thanks, Debbie. I mean, she um, is also an amazing person I've met um, through this program, so I appreciate that. And, you know, I, I will say, you know, a hidden skill, I... 
I think the whole like term, I feel like everyone feels this when everyone has probably talked about this is like the whole concept of like the imposter syndrome. It's like when you, when you first start, it's like, am I supposed to be here? What can I offer? And, uh, and I felt like I, I always knew I couldn't really like offer anything like hard skills wise, you know, <laughs> like I'm not the person that you're going to go to, to be like, you know, where's uh, this budget stuff and this balance sheet. And the fact that I even know what a balance sheet is still like kind of a miracle. Um, but I think <clears throat> one of the, um, I think, sorry, Henderson. Um, uh, yeah, like that, like the, like the promo. Yeah, my, uh, I think it's just me being able to be myself and, and help deepen relationships. You know, I, I, I see myself as sort of like a broker and almost like a bridge. So it's sort of like how I fell into what I do for a living. And, and, uh, and I sort of compartmentalized a little bit of like school and work. But I, I came to the realization that I could, actually I could bring, you know, some of the stuff I do for work. Um, that I've been like successful at into like this business school experience, which is, you know, when I'm at events, making sure people know everybody, make sure there are people mingling, make, making sure that, you know, I'm bringing people together as much as I can. And, you know, I, I think I came to the realization that a lot of people, I mean, just most recently, you know, there was someone I was talking to and I was talking to him about one of the classes we we're taking about um, advanced uh, management communications, which is like a very interesting class about presentation skills. And, you know, and this individual is telling me that, you know, he is an engineering background. So, you know, um, that some of these classes, you know, have been super valuable to him. But to me, like, it sort of like comes to me as almost like second nature, but, but it's almost like, you know, helping and uplifting those people who need a little bump in like the soft skills, I suppose, which I would argue is like very important, you know. Um, it is. Uh, and, and you know, really helping elevate them and making them feel like included and that, you know, they can have a conversation with people in, in a safe space, you know, has been super valuable um, to me. And then, and I guess another thing, you know, to like Debbie's second question about like what sort of like lesson I learned in Anderson um, that's proven valuable at work is, you know, it's just, a lot of little things, to be honest. Um, so I was just thinking about this the other day, and um, and back to back to Professor Ullman's class I took last quarter. You know, he talked about listening, that whole concept of active listening. And I think as individuals, um, we all feel like you know we've done. You know, I mean, Fembas. You know, it's like you've all done okay for yourself so far, and you feel like the way you behave or the way your personality is or whatever, you know, is, has like, you know, taken you this far. So it's like, what's the big deal, right? Um, <laughs> it's so, worked so far. I know. And and I've always believed that I was always a good listener, but then that class actually told me that I wasn't. Um, and I was sort of like shocked. I was like, wait, what? And, and one of the lessons that I learned was that you could be listening, but you have this inherent bias where someone is talking to you, but you already have like, your decision made up before someone talks to you about it. So, and and I had a moment of self-reflection. I'm like, oh my God, like I do do that, you know? So like when someone, like someone on my team like comes to me and says, I have this proposal in my mind, I'm like, these are the reasons why I can work. These are the reasons why I can't work, but I need to like take that away. You know, I need to give this person a blank slate and have them, you know, um, you know, have them like really, you know, speak their case without me having all these sort of like judgments already ahead of time. And, and I've already sort of made an internal decision before they said something. So, you know, that, that was a huge lesson for me because, you know, it's something I didn't realize I was doing, but I was doing, and it was sort of like a wake up call for me. So, um, so like little classes like that. And I, and I was talking about how I sort of like fell, you know, and uh, sort of picked my own lane, you know, um, coming into this, I, I knew that, you know, I would want to, you know, like learn more about, you know, um, more business stuff. Like, I, you know, like I want to learn a little bit more about like finances and I want to learn more about like accounting, like sure. But, you know, after, you know, core, I really decided that I'm going to really um, enhance, you know, my, my management and, and organizational behavior skills, you know, and, and all the electives that I've been taking so far since core has been, has been such. And, 
you know, um, and, I, and I think a lot of people will come to this program thinking like, I want to pivot into another job or I want to challenge myself and like take these other courses. And I'm, and I'm not saying like, don't do that or that I'm not doing that, but I, I was able to at least choose and forge my own path, which again is like, this, this is, you know, what I want to accomplish, you know, and this is how I want to better myself as an individual and get the most out of this program. And, um, and I, and I'm glad I was able to do such things. So, you know, um, if you are someone who really wants to enhance, I would definitely uh, recommend you really like pinpointing exactly what areas of, uh, about your career you want to enhance and, and just really going for it, like all, all the way through. Well, let me, I'll, I'll give you, Robert um, asked, you know, what are some of your most memorable memories at Anderson so far? And, and also when we spoke, you talked about um, your, your um, class with Professor Cassie Maligner-Holmes and her happiness and about experiences. So maybe you could even blend those two together. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, um, Robert, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's been a lot of memorable experiences, but, you know, I, I must say, though, um, it's, it's interesting. So um, Robert Chai, for anyone you know, that doesn't know, is, is in our class. And, you know, I have an interesting history with him. So um, Robert and I sort of crossed paths at, in undergrad. So Robert was actually like um, a key uh, player on the football team at the time when I was also doing my Bruin thing. And so, you know, um, also, like, you know, he's like a friend of, you know, my big bro, I guess. And, and so so we like sort of had um, our, our paths that crossed. And I will tell you, um, the reason why I'm telling you this story is, is um, he's someone that I was able to sort of like have uh, to, I, I don't know, to, um, I guess, revitalize our relationship through this program. I had no idea he was going to be in this and I and I don't think we were really talking. And literally I saw his name during like LF and we're like, wait, are you in this program? And we're like, oh yeah. And then and and then you know I think we're able to um you know sort of like you know develop a relationship that's you know even like more bonded than before through you know our trips to you know some of the Anderson festivities and um, and it's just little things like that. So like to your point, you know, in, in um, Professor Cassie's class, you know, it's, it's the life design um, and, and like the application of like signs of happiness or, or, or I don't know, I, I might, it's, it's something like that. Um, sorry, Professor Cassie. Uh, but, uh, but basically there's this concept of like hedonic adaptation, which is the idea that like nothing, basically like you get sick of stuff. You know, so it's mm. like the same idea that like if you're on a vacation, um, if you're on a vacation like to Hawaii and you get a ocean front view, the first day you're there, amazing, you know, right? And you're like, I can't believe this is breathtaking. But then for someone who like lives there, is it the same? Probably not. I'm sure it's the appreciated, it, but just doesn't have the same effect. And it basically like is that idea that, you know, things like money or things like what car you drive what kind of jobs you have like those are all sort of like short leading and 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 it doesn't matter because those aren't the things as, as much as you think makes you happy they don't it's it's like these memories and it's like these experiences mm -hmm. and and to me um there's a lot of like little memories and experiences like you know for example like you know um after our first final i remember my section one people um you know our, our final was for data and decisions and we all sort of came out of it being like oh you know like what the you know like being like that was crazy <laughs> and we're like we wanted to really like you know sort of um memorialize you know that event of like this is our first final we're done with our first quarter in business school like how do we do this so like so many of us got together on zoom and we just started drinking together you know and we have all these like cute little photos where zoom screen we when we have like grab a book you know we have a book you know like you know put like your drink on your head you know it's just like silly things like that and it's I know it sounds so stupid I guess it you had to be there but you know it's like those little memories and I also remember um you know like having this like really like late night conversation like I think Al you know it was like Ali and Myron and like Margarita who's not here you know where we like really talk about really vulnerable stuff and and you know like it's those things and 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 us being able to really harness the opportunities of, of ways that we can connect with each other and be social, even during the COVID environment, I think has been super special in that sense. So, you know, I think about the whole Anderson experience 
in general and just looking back, you know, and to my point about what we learned in, in the happiness class is that like, yes, like business goal is expensive. I'm not going to lie, you know, like, you know, it, it is, it is a, a hefty investment, but at the end of it, you know, I don't necessarily think I'll remember how much, you know, the units cost. I'll remember like the moment when, you know, I had, um, I went to Dubai and I am forever like, you know, bonded with these people that I feel like I went like through life and death with because of like this COVID outbreak in our group or, you know, or like, you know, um, you know, celebrating like Kevin Chi's birthday party this, you know, past weekend where, you know, where we all got together to really like show up and like celebrate this one individual because it's like when someone invites you, you know, you clearly like mean something to them. So you want to show up and you want to be there for these people. So it's like those little moments, I think that, that really add the overall value to, to the program. And as much as like expensive as this program is, you know, you're sort of like not going to remember how much it costs. Well, you remember how like it was expensive thing, but, but all these other memories, I think will definitely elevate um, enough to, to, to feel like it was well worth it at the end of the day. Mm. Well, and, and this one, I, Kristen asked a great question that I am curious about. Like when I saw you at the Wooden Awards that night, you're like texting and, you know, you're just a busy guy, right? <laughs> new, new big job. And I, I have my own appreciation of trying to balance children and work. But Kristen asks, you know, how are you able to balance work, school, and personal? What recommendations do you have for other students to make the most of their time at Anderson? I don't know. I feel like I should ask this question to Kristen. I feel like, you know, she's super woman. So I feel like, you know, she does everything so well and, um, and does it with the style too. So um, I, I feel like, you know, again, this question should be directed to her, but I mean, you know, I think, listen, like there, there are, you know, so many. <laughs> Rolling my <laughs> eyes. She writes, um, I've never had such an active chat. You guys are great. I love all the attaboys that you're giving y'all. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Um, you know, I think something's got to give, you know, I, I feel like you really have to prioritize, you know, what you can do. And, and I think like, to me, sort of like the, the older I get, you know, it, it, it's like, you have like these little like circles of like your life, right. Where it's like, here's like school, here's your personal life. And here's like, you know, work, whatever. And they actually start to kind of converge more and more. It's a very gross man diagram. Thing, you know where it's sort of like this eats into that and that eats into this and um I, I think like one like you know just organization you know just making sure like calendar wise that you're good and um and just knowing your limits I think is also another thing so uh like for me like I didn't take summer school last year you know because I knew I needed a break and I knew summer was gonna be a big time for work and um so, so I, I, you know, try to plan as much as I can in advance. Why, why, why the LOL, Robert? I don't get it. Why is that funny? <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like there's something he wants to say, but he's not saying. Um, focus on your, okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, my focus. You know, it's so funny because I'm literally like, you know, I go through these Zooms and when I do this, like, you know, it must be so distracting for professors and I do not know how they can teach in the Zoom session, but um, there's that, but also just, like I said, prioritizing. And again, it's so, it's so funny because I think Kristen and Vishnu who were um, in my learning group and it was also Mike Maganya and Marcella Tompkins, you know, when we did our um, learning agreement, or um, learning team agreement, you know, like I remember everyone was like, I want A's. <laughs> so, like everyone was like, I want A's. Um, and we we're all like, yeah, okay, sure. And then I remember like four weeks into it, we we're like, yeah, so <laughs> we're gonna do like the best we can and, and B's get degrees, you know, sort of like that sort of mentality. <laughs> you know, I think you have to really like, just think about what you wanna get out. Like for me, like I, I appreciate the academia and and wanting to strive for your best to to get A's, you know, or whatever. But you know, to to me, it's it's really like the the personal relationships that's super um, imperative in in my journey with this MBA program. So, not saying that I'm gonna be totally negligent with my schoolwork, but you know, I'm also not going to um, stress so much about. A paper where I miss out on like milestone events for people, you know, and um, 
So distracting the chats. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks, Janet. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, you know, there's that. And I don't know. I just feel like everyone has their own way of doing things and some things will suffer. I mean, you know, there's only the pie is as only big as is. And if you're devoting, you know, this much time, you know, that's infinite and then something else is going to drop. So really, um, you have to just manage your own timeline, I think, but, and, and figure out what's more important to you in that sense. Well, there's a, there's a question from Amy I want to ask, but before that, I just want to see if I can slip this in. Um, if I scoot over here. So we, we got, we're going to go, this is out of sequence, but if we go back in time, so, you know, tell us a Joe Bruin story. Like, what's it like to be the mascot at a division one school? You know, you got to go to a final four, just give us a little bit of a throwback to, well, to I mean, time. How, how'd you, how do you even get to be the mascot? Don't a lot of people want to do that? I mean, that, that was a very, um, I mean, I look very happy in that photo, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you look tired. I mean, it's very hot. I mean, you know, I mean, it's sort of, it's so funny because I remember um, trying out and not thinking like there was going to be, like, you know, that there was going to be, like, it was going to play such a huge role in my life. And and to be honest with you, it did because um, when I was interviewing for a job at NBC Universal, you know, um, my boss said I was maybe too like corporate or like I was too buttoned up and like and that they wanted someone who was a little bit more like you know like Lucy or whatever or Goosey or I, I don't know just someone who's just like a little bit more like laid back and they said that once um <laughs> once they once they saw my resume that said that I was Joe Burrow that they're like okay like this person like is fun so like that's why I got hired after like 11 interviews or something like that wow. but um so it did help but like you know at the time when when I was an undergrad I just sort of like did it for fun you know like there, there were some people that I knew that were involved with the spirit squad and um and they're like you should try out and I was like uh okay I mean I didn't really know what was going on but um there were like different like parts of the audition so um, one was essentially learning a routine, like a small routine, and then you having to dance in the suit. And the second one was sort of like these scenarios they would give you, like, you know, it's fourth and one, like what sort of cheer do you do? You do? Or like, or there's like a kid, you know, at a bar mitzvah, you know, who like, you know, is crying, looking at you, like, what do you do? Or like, you know, oh, you're like the mascot, know? like the mascot scares the kid at the bar. Yeah. Mascot. Or something like that, you know? So it's sort of like, there's all these different, you know, like situations that happen and you have to be prepared for every single one of them. And they want, and, and by doing so, they were also like testing, like how much, like, you know, um, sports knowledge do you have? Because for example, like, you know, if you um, are down or whatever, your, your quarterback just got sacked. You don't like, you know, don't cheer at the wrong you know, time. you're not, you're not doing an eight clap after that. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, um, and there's like offensive, you know, like offense cheers and there's like defense cheers. And so, so you want to make sure you do the right stuff. So I got tested on that. And then like later you do, like you get out of the costume and then you actually do like a set down interview with the, a, a panelist. So, um, you know, I was, I was chosen. Um, and, uh, there are actually three Joes and three Josies. Um, Josie Bruin is like the, the, um, the girl version of, of Joe. Um, and, you know, we do routines together. I mean, it was sort of intense. I mean, you know, um, every football game we had to be at, we would at least, we would at least like separate it so that, you know, um, a pair would do pregame, which would require us like being on the Rose Bowl for tailgates and doing like the chancellor's tent and then like the, the alumni tent and, you know, basically taking photos with fans and doing all that. And then the first half and then the second half. So, um, I always liked doing the pregame because I, that means I would have like not been in the suit and I could watch the game afterwards. Nice. Um, so I could see Robert Chai playing, I guess. Um, but, you know, I, or, or I would do first half sometimes, but like, I also like, just like the routine of like, you do this, this, and this, this is like on your schedule versus just, you know, so I, I always chose pregame as much as I could. Um, and then, you know, I got to go to the final four when you were, um, it was the Kevin Love and, Russell Westbrook here. So that was really special. Um, so. I, it's just, you can't even no. like, just, to, just to like, we had Kevin Love and Russell Westbrook, you know, it's like, I know it intellectually, but when you reminded me of it, I'm like, yeah, we did. Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. So Those that guys was are so talented. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was um, an interesting gig, but I mean, it definitely got hot. I remember, you know, after the first time I was in the suit, you know, I think it was like 95 degrees in Pasadena, oh. um, you know, because it's those, you know, those, you know, the, 
the Pasadena weather in like what, like late August, early September. And I didn't really know like what it was really going to be like, but like, it's literally like another 10 to 15 degrees hotter in the suit because think about it. It's like, you literally have fur all over you like this thick. And it doesn't um, breathe. It doesn't breathe. Like, I mean, the only air ventilation is through the actual nose. It's the mesh. So that's the only place that you can actually see and breathe. Um, like literally, it, like it would be like this. this would be did like, you get claustrophobic ever? I mean, did you pass out ever? <laughs> um, back to Robert. You know. uh, um, Robert, Robert suggests try playing in a game. Oh my God. I can't, you know, Robert's going to be the next, your next guest. And then I'm right. gonna constantly be on the chat, just giving him crap. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I mean, it, it was, it was nice to, I mean, the, you have to like look that suit around everywhere, but I mean, it was, there was a little bit of pride and obviously being the, the face of the university. So, um, you know, but it was, it was good. It was, it was fun. <laughs> but I just, again, like I had no idea when I did this back, you know, during my undergrad years, that it would be something I'd talk about. <laughs> That'd be, be a, be an interesting topic of discussion, like, you know, so many years after. Well, I want to circle. Amy had asked a question earlier. You, um, what do you want to accomplish with your fellow FEMBAs before you graduate? I thought that was a great question. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's like we're running out of time and I just want to make the most of it. I mean, um, you know, we're, we're doing gap, um, or I'm doing gap and, <laughs> I'm, uh, and, um, you know, where's your, club. where's your, have you picked your company? Are you matched? Not you yet. Not we're yet. we're okay. actually, I think our, our, um, write up for like our top five or, or something like that is due next week. So, um, you know, shout out to my, little you know like I said like you know you think about like your board of um advisors and like I feel like the gap is the perfect example of that because you know in my gap group it's it's Myron who like I said is like a mastermind in operations and then Kristen who's like a marketing genius and then I also have David Gaskins a, a software engineer from Google and Leon Moss who is this incredible baker who's also trying to transition into more of like you know the real estate stuff so you know I, I feel like we have sort of the I don't know, a, a power group and looking forward to, you know, helping these, or I guess a, a company, you know, um, strategize and come up with their business plans and stuff like that. So it's, it's going to be super interesting. Um, and that, and just, you know, uh, I, I really want to take, um, so after I, I sort of feel like I'm good with like the electives that I've, I've chosen and, and helping me um, really get better at like some of the management stuff you know I, i'll probably try to take a few probably like once i'm done with my units i'll probably take it maybe past now pass so i can like not um stress out too much but you know i mean there's a lot of interesting electives that i think anderson offers like i'd be i'm open to learning more about um you know business creation i mean like i i know a lot of people took like you know EVI and stuff like that, but I sort of am like, eh, I'll wait that towards the end. I'll wait. Um, like I, I want to learn about how to like perhaps create a business, but maybe not like while I'm also trying to take these other classes. And I know a lot of people have different paths. So that's well, and and I'll, I'll just throw my commercial out there, and I don't know how you'd fit it in because you got a big life. But do the being a leader in the effective exercise of a leadership class. Yeah. That one, that's with my my professor, my friend from social welfare, Chris. Chris did it last year, so. There's, I mean, but that's the FOMO of Anderson, like too many good, oh, you know, know. and, and that's, nice. that's kind of what you're paying for. Why the big price tag? Well, you know, it, it's, it's to give you all of this plethora of choice, Yeah. And, you know, and it's like, what could I, what could I squeeze in, in the, in the, you know, cause it does, it's crazy. Cause people always think, oh my God, three, two and a half, three years. It's, it's like law school. And it's always the same thing. You get to gap and it's like, oh my God, it's going to, it's going to be over pretty soon. Yeah. You know, because I mean, gap it, will gap will pull you through the summer and the fall with uh, yeah and velocity, just, and just like little things. Like I mean, by the way, I still have not been invited to Henry Ma's house for a um for a home cooked meal that everyone gets raving about. So hopefully, um, you know, that's something that I'll be able to do soon. But uh, but also just you know, I mean, like. Amy and I were, were, we were in section one together my, my first year and we're in, I'm actually in both, we're in, or I'm taking two classes, we're both in the same class. So um, just little things and, and we're like, you know, texting each other, chit chatting about class stuff. So it's just like these little things that there's nothing in particular, but I mean, but I am excited, like, you know, about these sort of like tentpole events, um, yeah. like, uh, like Gap 
you know, Fema Palooza we've never had before. That's um, right. Oh my so, God, it's going to be epic. We're working so on it today. July, you July know, 23rd. Um, yeah, so looking forward to that. And oh, and we may need your help to get Joe and Josie there because sometimes. Oh yeah, <laughs> no worries. I'll just uh, if anything, I'll, if worst comes to worst, I'll just be <laughs> like. <I'll, laughs> uh, um, and then you know, and then you know, um, just some more like traveling with with my fellow Anderson mates, um, you know, internationally. And I mean, mm. fingers crossed. I mean, on one hand, I'm like so excited, but on the other hand, I'm like, oh my god, this pandemic. Uh, do you know? Do you know Gonzalo's stranded in Europe this week? Oh my gosh. Yeah, he went, no, with, but... <laughs> he went with a group of Embas who were, they were the COVID class who did not get a trip. And then a whole bunch, they had a big COVID outbreak. So yeah. he's over there waiting to come back. He's been there like an extra week. Yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you did it in Dubai, right? Dubai was, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's like, it was fun while it lasted, but again, like those memories, you know, will stay with me forever. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it just, just really just trying to take the most of it because I feel like once it's over, like, we're never going to get this back, you know, it, it's like a moment of time and, mm. uh, and really just trying to spend quality time with people as much as they can. And um, because, you know, you really do like, it, it's sort of like these three years, I think for a lot of people are very uh, transformative three years of their lives. You know, I mean, I, I've gone through, you know, people, I mean, people are getting married, like there's, you know, people that are losing loved ones, you know, I mean, this pandemic, like literally people are having children, like, you know, like there are people that are literally like, you know, taking a final and then having a baby, <laughs> like it's crazy. Um, and, uh, and it's, and, you know, just overall people are so impressive. You know, I, I am like shocked at the level of their um, tenacity and, and just like their, caliber of, of just like being able to accomplish so much and I know like you know Kristen asked me about like balancing life I don't know how people with kids do it like I have no idea I feel like you know I'm like I'm really not the one to ask that question because there are far more impressive people I mean like people who drive up from like San Diego every weekend you know uh, people who like travel in you know um, from Northern California or like Chicago or like you know whatever and I'm like compared to that, I have it pretty easy. So, um, you know, I think, I think we're just surrounded by people, um, of like, like-minded, like, you know, um, people and, and almost like same level of like aptitude too, that, you know, I feel pretty lucky to be surrounded by a lot of these people and call them my classmates. And hopefully, you know, once we're done with school, we'll still, um, be connected, but I mean, we always will. So, yeah. Uh. Well, speaking of family, it was my my younger brother John who gave me the idea of the 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 Bruin bear hug. So you know, you get if you could you get three bear hugs, um, you know, like a faculty shout out, a friend, and it could be multiple. I'm not going to make you pick out pick just one. You know, a faculty, a friend, and a family. You know, nobody nobody gets through Femba by themselves. It takes a village to raise a Femba, right? If you want to go fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, go with a team. Right. And, you know, you're just, you're the embodiment of team. You're, you're a, you're a connecting person. And yeah. that I love, I don't know if it's John Wooden. I hear it attributed to him. I can't for sure, but you know, people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the, the power of the quote unquote soft skills gets overlooked mm -hmm. is you can master, you know, you can run the regressions and analyze the data, but if, if people don't, experience your human empathy you know if, if it occurs like you're the smart manager who doesn't care you know watch your effectiveness be massively constrained mm -hmm. con contrasted with managers who you know i love it takes 10 hands to score a basket it's amazing what you can accomplish when you're not worried about getting credit all those john wooden aphorisms that are so helpful so yeah so from that spirit if you could, if you could do a shout out, a faculty, a friend, and a and a family, who who would you like to shout out of those three categories? I mean, I mean, I guess faculty wise, I mean, you know, um, I got it's so hard to choose, but I, I I guess I would say um, maybe like the first professor I had it was Professor Hang Chen Dai, um, oh. you know, for OB and LF, and I guess just sort of because I think. Um, 
you know, she was the first sort of like person who set the, I don't know, just, just in my career, like MBA career, I guess. Um, and I think those professors are always like really um, indelible to a certain point, but also like most recently, like if, if you have to get COVID and, and be stuck in Dubai for 10 days, then I suppose, you know, you should receive the professor of the year honor. So I know like professor Sussman is getting that. So um, we were just invited over to the other other like last week or something so um so that's been really cool and then friends wise I mean you know I it's like so hard because I mean like literally everyone here you know um yeah you know are showing up and like I said it just means a lot when you know the, the hardest part is showing up you know and I will say that like people that I thought I wouldn't be really friends with are like my best friends now and people that really you know um just just another reminder in life that keep an open mind of, of the people you'll meet and, and don't you know have any sort of like preconceived notions and um and you know it's it's really hard to pick but you know my my first you know learn like all my learning groups you know um find amy <laughs> <laughs> i think amy y'all he is getting hazed in the chat he's oh this, my god this is like he's getting cold called and it's awesome Yes, uh, first learning group um, definitely keeps it interesting. Uh, and then, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> That's very distracting. Um, and then I guess family-wise, you know, I'm I'm gonna choose my dad, even though he's no longer with us. Um, but he was sort of like, you know, like the reason why I feel like I've been able to build a life and you know, a lot of the things that I've learned, um, I've learned through him sort of um, indirectly, you know, work ethic and integrity and just overall being kind to people. And uh, and also, I don't know if I'd be on this NBA journey if, you know, all the stuff that happened with him didn't happen at that exact moment. So, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I am who I am. I'm obviously like literally a part of him. So, um, that that's the person I would give my final bear hug to. And then actually I do have one more person. It's, it's, it's Dylan. Dylan, I feel like you've been like you, I mean, you are like such like a proponent of the summit program. And I know you are like a one man show and I don't know if you get enough like recognition, but you know, the, the amount of like love you give to the Thembas and this program with your recruitment and just with, with all the perspectives and the current students and all that and the alumni, like, I mean, your, your energy is very palpable and, and we can't thank you enough for all your support with, um, with everything you've done for us. Well, thank you, Young. That's very kind. And yeah. I, I just want to circle back to your acknowledgement of your father. I get so overwhelmed getting to have these interviews. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm a very optimistic person by nature. And I respect how hard FEMBAs work. I was a full-time student. You know, we, we worked hard Monday through Thursday. And then, you know, we had a three-day weekend every weekend. And I'm not sure that I utilized that time very well. And I just watched FEMBAs spread themselves over career and school and personal life. And I respect it tremendously. But even bigger than that, you know, I'm, I'm a, I know we've gone through a, traumatic two years. And I know that many things that are less than perfect in our democracy experiment have been spotlit. I get that. I get that people have suffered in many different ways. But when I think of, you know, your parents coming from Korea, your father driving to sell three or four t-shirts for $10. And the legacy of his sacrifice is you being the face of one of the premier universities in the world and a vice president in charge of storytelling globally, you know, that doesn't happen in many countries around the world. That story just doesn't even have an opportunity to exist. So are there things to fix about America? A thousand percent, right? We're a work in progress, but let's not lose possibly the appreciation of what we uniquely do really well, which is create pathways where people can write stories that are not able to be written, intergenerational stories where you can make a sacrifice that your children can benefit from at the level that this country allows. So um, I get very humbled as a guy who grew up in East Texas where nobody was, nobody was from anywhere other than East Texas. <laughs> nobody moved to where I grew up. Yeah. We were just already there. I, I, I am, 
I, I am humbled by the energy of California. Thank you. You know, to, to attract talented, hardworking people hoping for something better from around the world is, is mm -hmm. a humbling legacy that we're all somehow a part of. So, right. And, and I'll end the conversation by saying this, that I, I really do believe that like everyone has influence. And I think in order to have influence, you have to give influence. Mm. So, so mm. I think we all have it in our, in ourselves. We don't know yet. We just need to harness that energy. And I think, you know, with the people you're surrounded by and, and, uh, the people that you can make a difference. I mean, I do really believe that, you know, there are a lot of bright minds, you know, in the world, but for all of us to be gathered at Anderson at this specific time, you know, that everyone has the power to change and, and um, they also have agency to change. So, you know, I think it's important for everyone to work together and, you know, really leverage those solid relationships that you, you uh, can build in like the three years or sometimes less, you know, I, some people graduate early, but um, that's really the power of, I think the Anderson brand and uh, and of the people that, you know, were spending the two to three years um, with in, in our very formative year. So I, you know, thank everyone, you know, that are, that, that's showing up for me here today, people who probably want to show up, but kind of, and all that, but, um, but it's, it's been definitely a hell of a ride and I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, thank you, Young. Thanks, everybody. I know we went over a tiny bit. Thanks for this extra time. <laughs> Robert, you're cracking me up over here. Please run for president, y'all. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I love the comments. These have been wonderful. And if you guys want to come off camera, anybody wants to do a shout out here. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. This has been a treat. So I'd love to, I'd love to see some faces <laughs> behind all the... Let me un us. Oh, my God. Is that Faye? <laughs> Hi, Faye. And by the way, shout out to like the spouses too. I mean, seriously, like they, uh, they, they deserve so much. I mean, you know, geez. Yep. Well, well, hey. <clears throat> anybody want to say anything just to, there's Robert. Oh my God. You guys are great. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Hi, Henry. Uh, I'm a guy. Yeah, I'm a guy. Hey, Chris. Oh my gosh. So nice. Thank you. <laughs> Literally everyone here, they, they need, all need one of these um, interview things. They have, they have such like tremendous stories to tell, in my opinion. Well, I'm ready for a new job. I want to be the assistant dean of storytelling. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think we could, we could actually, like, it's, it's in our wheelhouse. Like, we are Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I think, actually, I've got some ideas for a, a technological infrastructure where we could be, like, stand and deliver part two, you know, yeah. sharing your story digitally. And we could create a I think we could create a FEMBA podcast pathway, you know, because there's, I don't have enough, I, I bear, you know, I have a, my wish list of people that I would like to interview has like 65 names on it. So it like a reality show. <laughs> I feel like we need a reality show. With them. I, I, I wish I knew some executives in entertainment. Gosh, if only I had some connections. Um, you know, I don't know. People like reality shows. Like maybe that's maybe. You know, like, and what can we, like, what, what would be on brand, right? Like, what is, what is brand in Los Angeles? It's red carpet. It's sizzle. Mm -hmm. It's stories. Yeah. I don't Sounds know. All right. Sounds about right. All right, Janet, let's talk afterwards. <laughs> Myron Spring Break reality show idea. <laughs> oh my gosh. That'd be perfect. Oh my gosh. Vegas. Oh, that's a series in itself. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody. Well, thank you. Young and I didn't know what to expect on a three day weekend. This is, this was epic yeah. to have so much support. Um, thank you guys made it really fun. Thanks you so much. All right now everyone, everyone go enjoy your weekend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll end it here. Thank you guys. This was, a, right. this was a blast. Thank you. Bye.